right, welcome back to Stadia Cast, everybody. I'm Bill. That's Lloyd. Good morning, Lloyd. Good morning, Bill. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing okay. Uh, I I slept like crap last night, so I woke up this no. morning and I was like, "Oh, I do not want to get out of bed." But you know, I ended up getting out of bed because going back to sleep, I'm just gonna sleep for 15 minutes and then wake up again and then <laughs> sleep for 15 minutes. Uh, but right. I'm awake and uh, a little sleepy, and I've had no coffee, but that's okay. Let's uh, let's talk about video games because that's. That's what we tend to do right here. Uh, if you did not know, every Sunday, Lloyd and I get together. We talk about video games uh, at nerdnest.tv or youtube.com slash nerdnest. And uh, we do that live, 10 a.m. Sunday mornings. And that's what we're doing right now today. Lloyd, uh, I looked in the show notes and it says that you haven't played anything. Uh, no. No. I, I put stuff in the show notes. I don't know. Maybe you're, you just, yours just hasn't updated. Oh, uh, there but it I have, is. Okay, I, have, I can see it now. <laughs> I have, refresh. <laughs> I have been uh, playing a fair bit on Stadia. I'm still doing my trophy thing and, and having fun um, when I have like a 15 minute period. It's like I can go get that one thing and I pop into a game because Stadia is fast and get that one thing. And then I turn the game off and then I go about my, my business for the rest of the day. So I've been playing a lot. Um, I did manage to check out Life is Strange Remastered, uh, which I was really looking forward to. I love the games when they originally came out. Um, because originally Life is Strange was divided into separate chapter downloads. It was an episodic game, so you had to wait weeks or months between episodes before you could continue the story. Uh, I played it that way, and it's so nice just to have it all on one on one disc. And uh, I played most of the way through the first chapter, and it's weird. I haven't played this game in forever, and I remembered where all like the the um, um, the picture taking opportunities were in the first chapter. And it's like, I haven't played this in forever. I don't understand how I remember this. Um, when I forget parts of the story, I, I remember the places, but I'm not remembering the story, which is kind of a weird way my brain works, I guess. Uh, but just really, really enjoying it. Um, it runs well. Uh, it's uh, it, it looks great. Um, I, a lot of people were expecting a lot from this remaster, um, but they kept the sort of... Um, like the art style for the character art, it always looked like um, illustrations where people are drawing things with like pencil crayon and then using some watercolors on it like that. Okay. that kind of like um, uh, what's that that Sega uh, uh, game? The the, the one um, starts with a V. I, I've talked about it on the show a hundred times. It's the I strategy it. game. Sega. I, I, yeah, I can't. Think of it. Somebody right in chat will remind. I think I know. I know <laughs> what, what game you're you're thinking, or what uh, what art style you're thinking of. But I can't. Right. I, Valkyria Chronicles. There we go. Oh, Valkyria Chronicles. So there you it, go. It, yeah. like in that in that way. Sort of. It, it's like it's like the world looks like um like it looks like art that's been drawn with with uh, pencil crayons and watercolors. Obviously, it's a 3D thing. Um, so you're walking around in right. it. So it's not obviously a flat thing. But it's always had that look. And then in this remaster, they took that style and dialed it up a little bit. They put a lot of a, a lot more polygons in the in the faces. They re um, remapped or re um, motion captured the faces for um, because a lot of the game is actors acting. Essentially, it's like mm -hmm. you're playing a movie uh, when you play these games. Um, so they did a really, really good job. Um, so I've been really enjoying this. I, I haven't gotten into the second chapter yet. I, I want to sit down one day when I when I have like a, a full day and just play through all of Life is Strange Remastered and then uh, start the uh, Before the Storm, which is a prequel to this one. So uh, looking forward to getting through the rest of those. Absolutely. I, I have not played uh, those games yet. I still, I you know, I like I started the third one and I was really enjoying myself and then I just, you know how I am. I get distracted, and then I, I never get back to things. So right. uh, this is definitely something that I want to try out, but I have not had a chance to. You've also been playing <laughs> Fast and mm. Furious Spy Racers Rise of the Shifter, which is spelled in the worst, most annoying possible way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Leet, Leet Speak is coming back, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I was really kind of excited to check this one out. Um because I knew it was a driving game with weapons and it's like, OK, I know it's not going to be Mario Kart, but this might be a fun multiplayer game to play with the kids uh, jumped in. And I think this is one of the um, one of the most unoptimized ports I've seen um, when you're driving the cars. Um, it constantly is like pausing 
and then catching up and pausing and catching up. And it feels like your car, like since I'm in a car, I'm like, man, the shifting in this car feels really bad. Like, is, is he not finding the gears? Like, why is it taking so long? But I was like, also, why is there 83 gears in this car? Because it keeps doing it. Um, and then figured out that, yeah, it's, it's like a weird, uh, frame pacing thing where, um, for some reason they, can't give you the data uh, if, through the engine that then is streamed to you. And then the game says, wait, we should be further along. And then it fast forwards to that point. It's like this weird pause and then catch up thing that's going on. And it was, it was um, persisting through, I played, I played a whole, um, a whole cup. So it's like four different races. And I recorded a first look, which I didn't post. Uh, and we, maybe we'll put it out for like members only or something um, just because it, it, it didn't turn out well. Um, the whole video didn't turn out well. And um, yeah, I, I just I don't know what's wrong here. It, it to me, it seems like it's an, an engine timing issue. Um, I've seen other games that have a little bit about that where they, they kind of like pause and then catch up and pause and catch up where it's it's either not reading stuff into memory at, at, at the speed that it thinks it should or one of their one of their routines is just running rampant or something. I, whatever's happening for the game. Um, looked at some other videos and other platforms, and it seems like it's only a Stadia issue. So I'm hopeful that a game like that could get patched because it is um, it's Fast and Furious. It's based on the cartoon, which is based on the movie. So it's like a it's like a teen cartoon on Netflix. I, I expected to to have a lot of fun with my family with this one, but it's almost unplayable with how how the the engine is just like starting and stopping and starting and stopping, which you expect to do in a driving game because you have a gas pedal and a brake pedal. But this is different than that. Yeah. He, so Lloyd sent me a message. He's like, can you watch this video? I want to know what you think of it. And I, I, I opened up the video and I watched and I was like and, and like I. I can I I knew that there was going to be a problem going into the video because Lloyd had kind of prefaced it uh, with me. <laughs> uh, so I turn it on and it's it's funny because I'm watching Lloyd do his first look and he's like, "Boy, uh, there's he he said specifically, oh weird, it's it's a little pause every time that they shift, and it was for I don't know it was like a 35 minute video or whatever, and it was the whole time, it was the entire time, <laughs> and it was terrible. Like it was painful to watch. Like I was watching it and I was like, anybody that clicks on this video is immediately going to close it. So then I went and I looked for other platforms to see if it was the same issue. Uh, and no, it's, it's an issue with this. And I remember when Stadia first came out, there was an interview with, I can't remember who, but one of the, one of the people who, um, was like heavy into the tech side of it, right? And the, I can't remember their name, but they said basically timing is really, really different on Stadia than it is on other platforms. And because of that, it takes a little extra work in order to get your game optimized for this particular hardware. And yep. I think that, you know, Rise of the Shifter is just uh, one more example of. Uh, a, a publisher or a, or a developer. I, I'm not going to throw developers under the bus because they do what they're told to do. Uh, sure. You know, one more example of the publisher not putting the resources where they need to be. But at the same time, like this is something that like the the QC at like a, a QC check should have caught this uh, yeah. on, on on Stadia. Like they should have said, you know what? This isn't quite ready. Send it back, and you guys need to fix this before you can launch your game on our platform. And it's just, it is really bad. And I didn't play it, but I just watched it. It was abysmal. And there were cutscene issues where, like, a person <laughs> who was talking just yeah. vanished in the middle of the cutscene. I was like, what the hell was that? It was very Even worse. strange. Even worse, the the starting cutscene, uh, the 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 leader lady. I, I don't watch the cartoon with my kids, so I don't know what it's what it which what her name is right um she's standing in front of a tv and she's pointing things out but there's no video on the tv the tv is just black <laughs> yeah and it's like is that supposed to be black because they're talking about stealth technology like is this a joke that they're showing off the stealth car um but yeah i don't think that was part of the joke so yeah it it unfortunately it looks like it needs some more time in the oven before it's uh fully playable on on stadia um i i was hoping it was going to be a really fun uh weapon based shooter um 
it needs a lot of work before it can be that even for like local multiplayer stuff um like because you can you can put up with a lot when you're just having fun with your family um like it's not like you're having friends over and playing a game and it's it's unfortunately not a not a game that that i can recommend right now on stadia with uh with with its just crazy issues with the uh with the engine um and yeah going back to what bill said we've heard developers uh say that if your if your engine relies on um the, the frame rate to calculate kind of like pauses and things you're going to be blown up on stadia because you your game could run at like 600 frames per second without you even realizing that that's happening you're not obviously updating the screen that fast but all of your routines are running that fast and that can show you some issues i think it was the um falconeer guy said that as well right so yeah it's um it it definitely it you need some extra extra work sometimes to to fix um fix and find things so maybe they can do that quickly for this one yeah oh boy i gotta say though watching that video was painful it was really irritating to like i can't imagine i would have shut it off after after five minutes of mm-hmm. playing like i cannot imagine how you sat there for 35 minutes fighting with the controls or it's not the controls fighting with that stuttering the whole time really strange uh yep. you've also been playing epistory which somebody told me was a sequel to a typing game that we i don't know anything about epistory story epistory is the first typing game uh we just got the, oh. the new one as part of pro which is the sequel or spiritual sequel or spiritual successor rather to epistory um yeah i, I jumped right into epistory and um because i heard it's a typing game so i was like well i play mostly on the couch this isn't gonna work for me Uh, (laughs) but i was like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna try and i got into it and has this like a really interesting control method where instead of WASD controls when you're playing on keyboard it's ef uh ji so you go you go forward with i and back with f and then left and right with e and j and because because your fingers are on the home roll row when you're when you're playing right so it allows you to to move the character and then immediately start typing by only shifting two fingers down to back to the home row. And that took me a second to get into it. And I was like, oh, this is really interesting. And then I was doing something. Uh, I was like, oh, yeah, I have to charge my Stadia controller because I was playing on my PC. So I reached over, grabbed my USB-C cable, plugged in my Stadia controller, which fired up right away. And, and you get that little notification in your browser saying controller is linked. And then all of the words on the screen went from like blight and car <laughs> and truck to ABA and YXAB. And I'm like, oh my God, you can co- totally play this game with oh. a controller as well. But instead of typing words, you're typing in the face buttons, uh, which is which is really interesting. So uh, I played, um, I beat the game uh, in about eight hours. Um, if I want to get all the achievements, <laughs> you have to kill, you have to kill 10,000 bugs. <clears throat> and I killed, I killed less than 2000 on my playthrough. So I don't think I'm going to be sitting there, um, just going through for another like 15 hours, but my wife really enjoyed my watching of, of playing that game. And she's like, well, I'll go in the arena mode and I'll spend a few hours there and get you those trophies. And I said, yes, way to go. Um, so yeah, uh, I've been playing that, loving it. And I'm actually really looking to getting into Nanotail now. Um, I, I'm glad I, I jumped into Epistory because it's been in my pro library forever. And um, I started it instead of Nanotail to check out the pro title. And I'm like, oh, wait, no, this is the old one. And then I got into it and it's actually a really interesting story. Um, it plays out in kind of like a, um, a paper, um, you know, those like uh, those books that you open and, and like the paper unfolds into like trees. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Like pop-up, pop-up books. book. So it's kind of like a pop up book, but with like little little squares. So the squares un- un- unfurl and form and then uh, and, and then the uh and 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 then <laughs> and, and then go together and then grass grows and then like f- paper trees and rocks kind of build up over it and stuff and it it's just like a really beautiful looking game with a really interesting story about um like kind of mental health sort of um so it kind of takes you on an interesting story and then you find out kind of why at the end of the game uh really fun if you have that in your pro library there's no reason not to jump into it because you can play it with a controller if you want um but it's uh it, it's a game that uh, for people that want to want to do something different want to maybe learn to type a little faster this might be a great game uh for you to to check that out so epistory uh hidden hidden gem that i had in my library forever and i just hadn't started and uh popped into it and i couldn't put it down i really really enjoyed it so okay i 
I'm struggling with this. So you can play it by just spelling things, or not spelling things, but uh, QTEing the the controller. Mm -hmm. Does that take away from the impact of actually playing the game? Like you're not typing grime and you know, uh, I don't know, snazzy or what? You're not you're not typing <laughs> words, right? You're just hitting. ABBA or you know your different uh, Stadia inputs to con to connect your controller to the, to the if, thing. Right. like does that hold up that way? I I still found it fun because it's it's an RPG. You're going around killing enemies, getting experience, unlocking powers, uh, unlocking new parts of the world, getting new dungeons to form based on what you've unlocked. Um, the words that you're typing really don't have much to do with the story other than like when you're lighting a torch, you're usually typing like fire and cinder and other like kind of fiery kind of things. There's an electrical um, part to the to one of the levels where you have to power these like uh, like Tesla rods almost and you're typing electrical words. But that's kind of the only thing where we're not typing the actual words would really get in the way. Um, it's whether you're typing a word on a keyboard or hitting QTE button presses on a controller, you're still kind of doing the same thing and making your way slowly through the story. Um, but yeah, really a lot of fun. I, it, it's a game that came out like, I think it came out like eight years ago on PC and I'd never played it and somehow missed it all the way after having it in my pro library for like a year, finally playing it. And, um, yeah, really, really enjoying Epistory. Awesome. Well, all right, let's move on to the news. And boy, the news is the news is rough. Um, there's an, a Business Insider article that came out. Uh, what is it, three days ago? Two days ago? It doesn't matter. A, a, yeah, a, a little bit ago. ago. Yeah. And um, it's not painting what Stadia is doing in the best light. Clearly, uh, right. what I will say is there's not a lot of new information here. This is kind of Okay, so everything that they say in the article is stuff that we kind of already knew, with the exception of a few new details. But those few new details are really bad, and uh, it, it's it's pretty frustrating to to read this. And I I think that I'm gonna let Lloyd start off because I think that a lot of people are like. They're going to get mad at me when I say what I think about this. And uh, so <laughs> we'll, we'll have you guys stick around for Lloyd and then I'll, I'll come in and ruin everything. <laughs> well, honestly, I don't think I will. I'm 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 still going back and forth about this article. Uh, Lloyd, sure. what what's your I'm going to read a, a, a quote from the article and then well, I'm going to give you a chance to talk about it unless you want to start first. Yeah, I just want to pre preface something. Um, so it the, the article from Business Insider, which was put up as a behind their paywall because it was um, it, it was unique reporting that they did. So they they locked those behind paywall articles. Um, it, it had a lot of news that we had already known stuff mm -hmm. that Google has come out and said with a few choice quotes near the end from um, from people that used to work, uh, former employees of Google Stadia. So I, I read it originally and I was just like, oh, my God, this is terrible. But then I was like, wait, they're former employees. So while this might have been a plan at one point. Is that still the plan now? We don't know. Um, so I'm taking a lot of what was said um, that was new in this article with a huge grain of salt until we get some more communication from Google. Anyway, that was kind of my preface for that. Yeah, and actually, uh, that that's a, another thing that we need to keep in mind is we don't know if this is true. This could all be a bunch of nonsense. Um, I'm sure that the you know, like the person who wrote the article believes what they were told, and I'm sure that the people who told them what they told them, believe what they said. That being said, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's 100% true. Although, you know, the Google's first response didn't really allay m my concerns. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's start sure. with this first quote. Since last year, Google has shifted focus of its Stadia division largely by securing white label deals with partners that include Peloton, Capcom, and Bungie, according to people familiar with the plan. So, f I mean... We already knew that that's what they were doing last year when um, Cyberpunk 2077 came out. It was like, uh, it was basically you can play it uh, if you buy Stadia, if you buy the game, you get a free controller, really, really good deal. And then 
<laughs> you know, they had SG&E shut down like right after, which kind of destroyed all the goodwill that Stadia was starting to get. Like everybody was like, "Well, oh, wow, Cyberpunk 2077 is playing really well on Stadia. The other consoles are struggling with it. This is this is really good news." And then they said, "Oh, yeah, well, we're we're no longer making our own games." Right. And yeah, it, you know, Lloyd exactly. and I said, uh, "That's not a big deal. It's more important that they go out and get third-party games for the platform because first-party games take way too long to make, and it's going to be better." This is this is a good move, and I still think that that what that what we said back then was true. It was a good move. But what do you first off Peloton? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting. I I had heard about Peloton um, doing a trial of a game where you're you're cycling to control the game, so you can you can cycle faster and slower. Like a lot of gyms have those active bikes that you can put on a. Uh, I'm driving the hills of France uh, right. or whatever. I don't know if there's hills in France. I assume there is, or the countryside of France. I should and hope so. Isn't that where they have the big bike race every Tour de France? Yeah, that's <laughs> Tour de France. So you're 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 cycling, and what's happening on the screen is the same. And then they have ones that are more video gamey, where you're you're doing some stuff and biking away from zombies or whatever. Um, so I'd heard that Peloton was working on a deal with that, uh, but then to have Google's name pop up in this article is actually a really good thing because as far as we know the only white labeling that google has done is with uh at&t and warner brother games for that batman thing so mm -hmm. there was like a month a month you could go and play that game for free and then it kind of disappeared uh, is it out is it not who knows no one's talking about it anymore and i'm not an at&t subscriber but that came out as google white labeling and we said this is fantastic if that means that those games which people had to port over are now on stadia what white labeling could could actually even be if they're not using any stadia tech for like um crowd play and and uh stream connect is maybe they have a way to run the pc version of that game on in the cloud on one of their cloud servers so maybe their white labeling is fully different from stadia but our hope with white labeling is that it'll encourage more developers um, to port the game to run on bare metal Stadia servers and then sell those games to us on the Stadia side as well, not just their website. Right. So um, anyway, we so we know that it's happening. Then we hear Peloton. That's interesting. That's uh, actually a really great business opportunity for Google, although maybe it isn't now with Peloton kind of taking a dive <laughs> because uh, people aren't locked in their houses anymore. Uh, but that was interesting. And then we found out from that article that the deal with Capcom was apparently to offer demos of all their games on their website. So the game might not come to Stadia, but people can play the demo of whatever the next Capcom game is on Capcom's website using Stadia Tech, which is really, really interesting. And then Bungie <laughs> right at the end, which um, apparently there was uh, they were working towards a deal where you could play Bungie on Bungie's web or sorry, Destiny on Bungie's website, and it would just be running on Google Stadia and streaming that way. So all really good things from a business standpoint, you want Google to make their streaming tech better. And they do that by um, by continuing to evolve, having more games running on it, have more people playing on it. So that aspect of white labeling is a really good thing. Right. And honestly, it the reason why when we saw that white labeling stuff happen that Lloyd and I were like, oh, this is a good thing is because from a from a just a monetary standpoint, it makes so much sense to say, all right, well, I'm Capcom. Uh, I'm going to and I'm all about Monster Hunter these days. So, um, you know, I'm going to put the latest version of Monster Hunter on my website but in order to do that with Stadia's like white label, I'm going to have to port it to that particular hardware. And I could reach more customers by just also selling it on the Stadia store. So it makes perfect sense that the white labeling would then follow with an influx of games on Google Stadia. But we still don't have Batman. You know, like it was yep. playable there for a little bit and then it vanished or, or, or like it's no longer available it was like this weird one-time deal to get people to sign up for AT&T and then it doesn't come to Stadia like they already did all of the work to get it to run on Stadia streaming tech Unless, why isn't it on Stadia like that's a weird thing and that yeah. definitely 
is like is concerning to me. You, you jump in there. Yeah, unless it's what I said when I was chatting about it. Maybe th- this game was brought a different way. Maybe it's running the PC version of the app uh, using some Stadia tech, but running like a Windows virtual machine um, that is running that game code using uh, Proton or the Stadia porting toolkit or whatever other technology Stadia is done to make that. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that that game was ported fully to run on Linux, uh, Vulkan on Google servers. We don't know what the tech is behind that. So if the if the case was they made a different way for an old game to run, there's a good reason why that's not on Stadia because they wouldn't want that on their service. Yeah. All right. Now we have another uh, quote from the article. It says, Google is trying to salvage the underlying technology. The Stadia consumer platform, meanwhile, has been deprioritized within Google insiders said uh, with a reduced interest in negotiating blockbuster third-party titles I'm gonna pause there for a second I feel like when they made the announcement that they were shutting down sg e and they were working on trying to uh, make value for their partners I think a lot of us assumed that that meant that they were going to be going out and trying to take all the money that they were using on sg e that was going to pay off in like four or five years and have that money pay off faster by going out and like port either porting games yourselves or buying ports uh, of games to come to Stadia. Now it's been a year. We haven't seen that really happen, even though we, we do like six months later, we had the Stadia porting toolkit and the changes to pro and all that stuff. But we we didn't see that that big third party titles thing come. I mean, look, somebody's going to say, "Hey, there's 200 games on Stadia." They're they're talking about bringing another hundred games on Stadia uh, this year. But what games are they? They're they're not going to be the games that I think people are looking for. They're going to be Rise of the Shifter or whatever it's called. I can't remember. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but that does not bode well. Which and, and then they go on to say, and then Lloyd's going to talk. The focus of leadership now is on securing business deals for stream, um, basically white labeling. Uh, People involved in those conversations said the changes demonstrate a strategic shift in how Google, which has invested heavily in cloud services, sees its gaming ambitions. What's what's your thoughts there, Lloyd? Well, the last part makes a lot of sense. If Google is seeing a market for running games for other companies, uh, it makes sense that they would want to get into that market. But you'd hope that that wouldn't cannibalize um, the current programs that they already have running in their in their organization, Stadia. Um, you, you would hope that that wouldn't be deprioritized, as it's said here. And to me, that was the kind of the, the most worrisome part of this article was um, some ex Google employees said that uh, they figure that it's 20% uh, of the number of people working on Stadia as it used to be. And to me, that's a little bit concerning if that is true. Again, we don't know if any of this article is true other than the stuff that Google's right. already publicly announced. But if that if that is happening, if they're spending 20% of the time on Stadia, 80% of the time on other things, well, also adding a whole bunch of people to their business. So maybe the 20 they're spending now is equal to 100% prior when they had less staff. We don't know if those numbers are factoring into it. I know I'm putting a lot of caveats into this, but you have to do that with a with a with an article like this from Business Insider. Um, but if they're really only spending 20% and they're no longer going out and spending the money on getting big triple A's, that is bad for the overall longevity of this as a platform for for next gen gaming. People that are looking at a PS5, an Xbox Series, uh, twenty five hundred dollar gaming rig, or just playing the game on Stadia. Um, I I can see Stadia running as it is, maybe with just indies and um, kind of um, I don't want to say shovelware, but those games that appear on every platform, um, usually having licensed kids titles. Shovelware is a bad name for it, but that's kind of the those types of games. It still has a long life, but it's not a long life for people um, that want to play the latest and greatest. So that's two big red flags from this article was spending less time and spending way less money, not going out and and buying the, the next Resident Evil um, ported to Stadia anymore. If that really isn't happening anymore, that is sad um, for, for the platform. 
Yeah, and, and so, I mean, look, when, when they said the whole white labeling thing, my initial reaction was take that money, don't get rid of Stadia Games and Entertainment, keep them around, and, uh, like, obviously there's going to be people who leave because they want to be people who are making games, but keep uh, a, a cadre of people around that can say, all right, um, game X, we want your game on Stadia. This team can port it for you. You don't have to do anything and right. you'll make money on the sale. All you have to do is let us port it for you. That would, that, in my opinion, as a nerd in an attic, <laughs> uh, I, I think that that could have been the thing that makes Stadia stay relevant. And it, it like, it feels like, Google never recovered from that initial impression. And this part is partly Google's fault, but it's also a, a lot of it rests on the on the shoulders of people who made expectations. Right. Uh, based on just what they thought. And then when Google. OK, why am I beating around the bush here? A lot of this is on the fault of people who said, oh, it's the Netflix of gaming. And then when it wasn't the Netflix of gaming, everybody was like, well, this is stupid. This is terrible. And they they like they said it's stupid and terrible for months before it even came out, which is ridiculous because that meant that you had made those assumptions without trying it. Mm -hmm. Also, part of the blame there lands on Google for not saying, you know what? No, it's not the Netflix of gaming. We never said it was the Netflix of gaming. It's going to be a store. And that's essentially what it is, is a store where you can buy games and play them without having to have a box under your TV, which is right. a really compelling thing. If Apple came out tomorrow and said, hey, everybody, we're going to sell you games and you're not going to need to have a device to play them on, people would be like, that's a really good business model. But because people expected it to be a subscription service where you pay one fee and every game is is yours... And then they right. didn't do that. Like that's that's not on Google, but they should have managed expectations a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and again, we're we're going into a lot of uh, potential futures or past that that yeah. probably or maybe don't exist based on just an, an article on Business Insider. But when SG and E shut down, um, we saw all communication kind of shut down. There was no more connects really. There was no more big press events except for the um, good stuff um, stuff that they did. But it, it was kind of a, a big shift from kind of like a corporate standpoint, which was worrisome. But we were like, OK, they're they're hitting reboot. This is going to take some time. Um, but maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe that that was the canary in the coal mine. Um, and we should have maybe paid more attention to it. Yeah, I guess so. Um, then, you know, we already took uh, talked about the 20% thing, uh, so I'm not going to uh, rehash that part. Um, we already talked about Bungie, so I'm not going to rehash that part. Oh, here, here's the, the... Bungie thing's interesting, because um, I didn't cover that when I talked about Bungie. Apparently, the deal was for Google to power the streaming tech, but Bungie would own all the content, all of the front end. It would be like, it wouldn't be Stadia. It would be... Bungie cloud and right. the only thing Google would be providing is kind of like the server architecture and the um, the, the 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 encoding that they do on their server blades, which is different than um, what some people are thinking about what white labeling would be would just be selling the game on your website or selling it on Stadia. This would be Bungie announcing their own streaming service, but it's actually powered by Stadia, which I think most of these business to business deals, um, if if they continue um are gonna be that it's gonna be company x has their own streaming thing for their stuff but then we find out down the road that it's powered by stadia well maybe none of those games are on the stadia storefront because that company wants to own all that stuff themselves yeah and the the whole idea of look the the 80 percent 20 percent thing you know 80 percent is google trying to take this technology which anybody who's had their hands on Stadia knows that the technology is friggin' awesome. Like, it is yeah. really fantastic. And anybody who tells you that it's not either has a crappy internet connection or they haven't tried it because it's really good. <laughs> it's 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 fantastic. Stadia is the best, in my opinion. 
Does that mean that their games run at the highest re- resolution? No, but if I sit down and play, nine times out of ten, unless it's Rise of the Shifter, spelled terribly, um, it's going to, <laughs> like, it's a good experience. And that, that's the thing that I think nobody ever focused on, which is crazy. And so, and now even Google is saying, hey, we've got this tech. And we've stepped on a thousand landmines in the past two years. If we could just get other people to use this tech, we can still make money. Like right. this, like if I was an investor in Google, if, if I was like a stocks guy and don't listen to me because I'm not a stocks guy. But if I were a <laughs> stocks guy and I read this article, I'd be like, Google is going to make buku bucks from this. They're going to make this is very good for Google. Is it good for the end user, the consumer? Well, it's not terribly different if you just want to buy your games from a website and play them. Right. But is it good for the people who want to use Stadia? I don't think so. I think it's pretty bad. Um, And they even said in the article, they said, they quoted somebody saying, there are plenty of people internally who would love to keep it going. And they're really working really hard to make sure it doesn't die. And I 100% believe that. And then I also believe this next thing, they're not the ones writing the checks. Uh, and <laughs> so that, that's that's not a good thing. Anything you want to wrap up before we get to Google's first response? No, just uh, again, just to remember, like Google's been hiring a whole bunch of people. Like if you look at their job postings, um, they, they had like tens or hundreds of jobs at, at one point f- that they were recruiting for across the globe for Stadia, Stadia Tech, either um, people that have um, – that have uh, experience in porting games, people that are good at um, kind of back end stuff. Uh, they were looking for marketing people. They were looking for communications people. Um, it was it was a bunch of different jobs. Um, so potentially, uh, like what I said earlier, the twenty percent that this article talks about is still a hundred percent that has been running since after SG Gene E left and all those people had parted ways. So maybe the core Stadia team hasn't really changed and their focus hasn't really changed. They just added on a bunch of other mm-hmm. people that are doing other things. Hopefully we'll find out at some point from Google uh, debunking some of these claims in this article, uh, putting us on the right path forward with the right information. Otherwise, maybe a lot of this stuff will be proven true over time and the state of the Stadia storefront is just going to get worse after year after year after year. Um, but we won't really know um, because we weren't expecting Google to get back to this for quite some time because we've seen in the past where they can't come up with their this week in Stadia stuff on Tuesday. And then they say we're, we're delaying it and they delay it to Friday. And you find out that there's nothing that was timely that would have happened between Thursday and Friday in here that really would have paused this, but sometimes communications and big corporations takes a, takes a long time for them to come out within a couple hours to come out with this response to me is impressive. Although the response itself doesn't really say much. Um, it, it's, a, it, it was a good first start to kind of get ahead of a lot of the kind of doom, doom and, and gloom articles that were popping up all over the internet and the haha I told you so's that were happening on Reddit and Twitter and all that stuff. Yeah. If you're one of those people who is like, twirling your mustache and rubbing your hands together at the failure of a, of a company like grow up what, what's your point like i don't understand what why people are enjoying this it's just dumb but whatever yeah uh, there's always people who root for something to fail uh sure. but l- let's actually put this on the screen and we had somebody uh super chatted in in a second i'll i'll, I'll t- we'll we'll thank you all of the memberships and stuff like that we'll, we'll get to you guys soon thank you um If you hear one thing, hear this. The Stadia team is working really hard on a great future for Stadia and cloud gaming. We hope you agree, and we know that proof is in the playing. They also said, We're particularly proud to be offering 50 games to pro members this February, with more than 100 titles to join Stadia in 2022, and plenty of free play days for everyone to enjoy. There's also more features feature goodness coming to stadia 2 stuff we can't talk about just yet but we promise to share when we can have a great weekend stadians okay so my reaction to this is i 100 percent believe that the that they are being forthright when they type this when they publish this statement i believe that they believe what they're saying 
I also, at the same time, and it's okay for me to have two two things that are battling each other here, it is <laughs> not enough. And I know that they did this within a few hours of the Insider article coming out, but we need to see some kind of real communication from Stadia in the near future if I'm going to continue to believe them. Because right now, I think that... The, I, I believe that this this is exactly what they said. Uh, plenty of people internally who want to keep it going. They're working really hard to make sure it doesn't die. That's this right here. That's right. this. But that doesn't mean that this is enough. Uh, like, I saw a lot of people who saw that tweet and they were like, oh, well, then I got nothing to worry about. This tweet didn't <laughs> say anything they really need to start talking yeah it, exactly and but but like i said in the past we've waited four days for yeah what essentially could have been a spelling change or something because <laughs> there was nothing timely in that news report right communication takes a long time for this to come out and say we're we we, we hear you we see you we're working hard trust us that that put I don't know. It didn't put me at ease, really, because there was a lot of disturbing potential from that Business Insider article for the future of the platform. But at least this is faster than they've ever done it before, which is really great to see. Um, but like you, Bill, what I'd love to see is a connect in the next couple months, um, uh, uh, articles, uh, interviews, um, video blogs that they're they're doing, talking about the service, talking about future games, letting us know that, hey, you heard that we're dead, but that you heard that two years ago and we're still around. We're still we're still around and we're still going to remain around for the foreseeable future. Here's all the great stuff that's coming out. Um, the, the, the second tweet talking about um, a, additional features or whatever, that's exciting to me because people said that when SG&E shut down, uh, there's going to be no more new features. I hope you're happy with with uh, stream play mm -hmm. and stream connect because that's it. You're not getting anything else. We said, well. They kept the engineers. They just moved to different roles. And clearly, that's what happened because they're coming out with new features for the platform as well. Yeah, and there's going to be people like Lloyd is being uh, completely reasonable here. He said, a couple of months, we should see a Stadia Connect. There's going to be people who are like, well, wow, Google needs to have a Stadia Connect tomorrow. And it, that thing, that kind of thing takes time. And Clive Illidan said it in chat. He said, I do think you need to give them time to put out proper communication together. 100%. And I 100% I agree with that. They need time to respond to this, but they need to respond to this. And this is a good first response, but if this is their only response, it's not enough in my opinion. And that's that's just a bad thing. It's Right now, it's kind of rough to be a Stadia fan, which sucks because I, I, I have been called a Stadia shill. I've been called a Stadia hater uh, because... I have always just been honest about my opinion. My opinion can change based on how the, based on the latest information. Um, but right now, uh, whew, I'm not I'm not feeling too confident with what's going on. And I, I think of the two of us, Lloyd is a lot more confident than I am. But I'm starting to feel that pessimism creep in, and it's <laughs> frustrating. <laughs> for me, for me, I don't think it's confidence. I think it's more. I I don't I don't like crying that the sky's falling all the time yeah, and same. i've uh, as i'm as i'm getting older i'm more of a let's let's wait and see approach to things where when sg and e shut down um everyone well not everyone a lot of people are saying see it's dead as you know it it's going to be dead in six months blah 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 blah. there were some great sound bites some other podcasts were were playing them for for jokes and it was it was a lot of fun but for people to come out and say right away it's dead that does nothing. Sure, it might be. And like Bill and I sat after the SGE shut down saying this might be the end of Google Stadia as we know it. But until that point comes, there's no point talking about the death of a service that is obviously still running in front of you. We can talk about the future. We can talk about what they need to do to salvage things if there is something to salvage. Um, but that is similar to this right now. Uh, it, like spending less time and less money um, devoting to the platform when your company made but like billions upon billions upon billions of dollars in the last quarter and all of 2021 to me that that is that's an insult to someone that is a big fan of that platform it's like you've made all this money but you're not using it to prop up this part of your business that has a lot of people really excited mm -hmm. um 
not spending money to get um, exclusives is bad because that means triple A's in the future may not come. Who knows what contracts they have signed up for the rest of 2022 and even into 2023, but potentially um, stuff after that is that we're not going to get big triple A's because they're not buying those porting agreements. Um, but then we're also hearing um, rumors of internal teams that are firing up that are going to be basically porting teams saying, hey, you want to get your game out on Stadia? You don't have time. Let us do it for you. Um, whether that is true or not, or if it's just engineers that are are on staff to be loaned out, we don't know. But there's so many, so many rumors and so many things. There's so many rumors, which makes me think that, well, the platform clearly isn't dead and there is going to be some more life for it. It might not be the life that a lot of people want, which is the latest AAAs, biggest games available day and date. This might be just a good place to play older games and indies and crowdsource games and a lot of other things, which is still fine. And I understand why people wouldn't want to support that because you vote with your own dollars. But we just don't know yet. And I'm going to talk about the good and talk about the bad, but also not worry about the future until Stadia gives us reason to say, OK, yeah, it really is done. You shouldn't be spending money here because it's going to be gone in six months. Yeah. And if you're one of those people who like you're just like, I want to play the latest games and I don't want to have to have a box under my under my TV. Uh, I think that the white labeling thing is actually a good thing for you. Like, for that person, that's a good thing. Because, like, yeah, you're not buying it from Stadia.com, but you're buying your game from SquareEnix.com. You're buying your game from, uh, you know, uh, Capcom.com. You're buying your games from the actual publishers instead of from Stadia. I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like Google is trying to move in the way where we're not the customers anymore. The customers are the publishers. And... Like I said earlier, that's really good for Google. Not so great if you are heavily invested in Stadia. But then, like somebody, I can see people saying, "Well, now I, I don't. I'm going to lose my games." I don't think that they're going to do that either. Uh, no. I don't think it doesn't make any sense for them to do that. Uh, it, it, in my opinion, it makes way more sense for them to just keep it going and keep yeah. trying to to keep uh, games on there. But now I think that the Boy, they're going to have to do a lot more work to get those games on there, I think. And they're going to have to do a lot more work uh, convincing the people, even the the diehard stadiums, um, that they are doing what's best for the platform. And the platform is still viable going forward. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's going to be tough slogging. And I'm sure, like the ironic thing, uh, let's back up a little bit. The ironic thing about this Business Insider article was it was following two weeks of really good news. We got news a couple weeks ago about um, trademarks in Brazil, about mm -hmm. possible expansion. We saw news about trademarks of Australia and maybe uh, an oceanic expansion to Stadia moving outside of where they currently are. Moving into new markets is a good thing. Then we got the, um, the the state of play for January talking about um, what a lot of people missed was a uh, another 100 games coming this year that they threw in that that article. And then ev everyone missed it because it looked like the normal boiler point, the boiler, boiler plate text that was in mm -hmm. all of their communications. And then mm -hmm. people picked it out and it's like, oh, my God, this is amazing. OK, f truly, they are planning to make the platform better. They're they're still investing and then the next day, boom, this article comes out and you you had to feel bad for the stadium marketing team, oh, yeah. like having bonuses and pluses and positivity and 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 just good things happening. I, I mean, bonuses, not like pay bonuses, yeah, but yeah, bonuses yeah. where websites that normally don't talk about Stadia or say bad things about Stadia saying, hey, it's not that bad. Here's an article about, hey, if you wanted if you wanted to get just free games from your online service. Stadia Pro was better than uh, Xbox Gold and PlayStation Plus and all these great articles that were just from other websites that normally wouldn't even say anything about Stadia if it wasn't negative. And then this hits and it's got to be like like the rug keeps getting pulled out from underneath the communications team. So I, I feel for everybody out there. Oh, man, that's um, rough. <clears throat> but I hope they can work to convincing the, the greater masses that Stadia is around. Unfortunately, when there's so many articles that have been written about your service being dead. Like, how do you come back from that? Yeah, every like, time you Google it, if you Google Stadia, it comes back with negative articles all the or, time. 
or the first thing if you type in Stadia that's recommended is, is Stadia dead? Right. That's a bad sign for your platform when that pops up. It is. All right. Well, we've been talking for a while. We had a bunch of people send in super chats and become members and messages. So uh, let's go ahead and get to those. Uh, Consigno uh, became a, a, a re-upped his membership. He says, I want the Stadia, uh, the global Stadia comms job, the once a year job. Um, <laughs> I, I know he's he's being snarky here, but the, it, it shows you that that's kind of a common... <sighs> They're too quiet, right. you know. Like last year, or I don't remember when it was. They basically said, "Hey, we're done talking about stuff before it's done." And I, I tweeted this out the other day. I think that that's not working for them. They yep. need to get out in front and and hype things up because otherwise, people are going to keep making those same arguments. Um, Dante Armstrong said, "Stadium me." become like play movies not the biggest store just another option toolkit will hopefully bring in more games stadia leaders need to speak uh what are your thoughts on that lloyd yeah like phil where where's phil like where where has he been Uh, the rumor uh, it partially from this article and other things is that he's completely removed from google stadia now doing other things he's living in london who knows if any of that is accurate or if if it's partially accurate or whatever they need they need a person to come out. They need uh, they need this the superhero John Destis to come out. Uh, obviously, he's not there anymore, but they need someone like that to be the face and say, hey, how's it going, gamers? We're Stadia. Here's what we're doing. Jim? Uh, get Jim. Get Jim to come out. <laughs> What's up, gamers? Or hello, gamers, uh, as as I say. But anyway, um, they, they need something like that. They need they need a, a to, to generate not a call to personality, but they need to generate some sort of identity for their communications and have someone be the lead, the major Nelson, the uh, yes. Reggie fils uh, like all, all the big, um, the big heads uh, of companies that ended up being mouthpieces. It turned out to be really good for those companies. And I think Stadia needs someone like that to come out and say, hey, this is our service. This is what we're planning. We know that you, you think we're gone. We're not. Here's proof. There we go. Yeah, come on this show. Tell people about it because like, we, we've we've talked to you guys before. We'll do it again. Uh, Karate guy Joe sent in a super chat for ten bucks. Thank you so much for that. They 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 quoted the uh, Stadia uh, response, and then they said Google's response tweet is ambiguous on purpose. And I, I'm not going to say that you're wrong, Joe. But what I will say is they can't say too much especially within just a few hours of this article coming out yeah. like they they cannot be that specific that fast they have to take their time and make sure that it's it's well crafted it's a different thing for lloyd and i to you know see the news come on here a, a day later and spout a bunch of nonsense when you're talking about a big corporation there are a lot of hurdles that have to be cleared in order for communication to actually happen. Lloyd? Yeah, 100%. Um, I, w- what you need is to delegate some some authority for someone that run, that is in the communications team to come out with these types of things, which obviously they did. They got that thing out within two hours, meaning it probably didn't go through a bunch of red tape and, and yeah. comms reviews and all that. Um, so if that is indeed the case, that is awesome. Um, but yeah, you need, you need to get someone out in front of people <laughs> we need we need we need some people uh talking and uh we, we need more than just a tweet that was ambiguous because it had to be um because they didn't want to say the wrong things yeah uh granite t rock sent in or became a or as a supporter again for 24 months thank you very much for that uh wow. support granite uh two years uh, they said i enjoyed Crazy. the business insider article as a 2021 review not as dire news and that that I I can totally see that, especially because th- this is quoting uh, former employees. Uh, sure. So uh, it's it's perfectly possible that that this is just a review of 2021 and 2022 might be fantastic. Uh, we don't know yet though. So there's that. Anything to add exactly. there? 
Yeah, I mean, that's granted. That's a great way to look at it. Uh, th this is covering news and stuff that we already knew happened in 2021. So they're talking about the success of their white labeling. Maybe it was a good thing. Um, but yeah, it a lot of things change. A lot of things can change in a company. And especially when you're in a global pandemic and a lot of people are working from home and 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 priorities change because of that. Um, hopefully 2022, we get a lot more news and they either confirm or or go against what was in this article, but it, but knowing is important and hopefully we will know at some point. Yeah, it would have been nice, like the what a lot of people were noticing with that tweet is that they didn't say none of this is true. Like that that's the thing that's upsetting to a lot of people is that the tweet did not say that 20% thing is nonsense. We're doing everything that we've been doing all along. I don't know. Uh, Wilmer... Alcavar, hopefully I said your name right. They said, do you think Dying Light 2 will come to Stadia? Um, we've seen, like, Stadia popped up on that that website for a short period of time, but it's not there anymore. Um, I We don't know why. You've played Dying Light 2. What do you think of that game? Damn, Dying Light 2 is good. It is a great game. If you like the first one, there's it's more of everything that was awesome about the first one. Um, so yeah, de definitely look into it if you like zombies and parkour, <laughs> because that's what the game is. It's a zombie parkour simulator, basically. Um, I, I would love to, uh, to, to say that Dying Light 2 is coming to Stadia because it is up on their website. Um, what I'm thinking, um, they delayed the Nintendo Switch version, which was a cloud version. Um, so even though it's being run by another company and ported by another company, the Ubitus or whatever that that company that Nintendo works with. It's not ready for that service. So maybe they just farmed out the port of the Dying Light 2 for Stadia and it just wasn't ready. So that's why they're not talking about it. Um, but hopefully that could be one of the things that uh, that Google talks about. Hey, we are getting Dying Light 2. It's coming uh, March 31st uh, or March March uh, 57th, uh, some weird date that doesn't exist. Uh, so no one quotes me. Um, <laughs> and, and so we know that it's coming, but it's just not going to be their day and date. That would be a great communication point because that is going to be a really big game for uh, the start of 2022. Uh, Karate Guy Jostin in another super chat. Uh, thank you again. Another $10 super chat. We appreciate the support, man. Uh, Google walking away from Stadia? No. Cloud gaming is the new standard. If Google washes their hands completely now, they will never win gamers back, and they know that. 20% is just Google being safe. Um, sure. I agree with that. Uh, I Well, it, the Google being safe thing, I don't know if that's the that's the case or whatever, but I don't think that they will ever walk away from gaming because there's just way too much money to be made in the gaming industry. Now, if they're making enough money being, uh, you know, selling their services to publishers instead of selling games to you and me, then maybe they would do that. But they're always going to be in the gaming industry because it's just too big to ignore. There's too many wallets there. Right. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and and again, like Crowdy Guy Joe said, like what you said, Bill. If Google walked away now, they could never come back. And cloud is clearly the future for almost everything. Everything that we do with computers will eventually be done on cloud computers, and we just get the results from it, it streamed to us on our phones, tablets, computers. So if Google was just to walk away from cloud gaming, they could never come back to cloud gaming because they they'd have even less respect than they have now from the uh, from the the general gaming public. So yeah, th this might be a slowdown period while they re refigure out some things, uh, <laughs> which isn't good English, but uh, there you go. Um, but yeah, I I don't think that they're gonna walk away from Stadia. That just wouldn't make sense considering that they want to do that white labeling stuff. All right, we're we're gonna wrap up now. So please don't send in any more super chats because we're gonna wrap up the show. Uh, Ruben DeGiling sent in another or uh, 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 is a I hate Remember. the way. That, it's a re-member, uh, 23 months uh, at superhero level. Thank you very much for that. Wow. Uh, they said, without Stadia, I'd probably never have met all of you. Let's keep gaming on whatever platform you have a preference for and works for you. Thanks for all of your content, Lloyd and Bill. Uh, and let's go, Nerd Nest. Man, you are Thanks, absolutely Ruben. fantastic. Thank you, Ruben. I appreciate you, Ruben. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Geek the Sneak sent in a super chat. They said they have to do better at informing the public. Yes, I don't have anything yeah. to say to that because we said that 400 times this episode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then Jem sent in a super chat that said Google didn't make Stadia. The community made 
what Stadia is. A loving gaming community. We are Stadia. And then his little bear emoji. Uh, thank you very much for the support, Jim, uh, who is now streaming over on Twitch. Uh, if you are looking for him, I don't remember the name of his his channel, but somebody somebody uh, uh, can Jim, you can post a link to your to your Twitch uh, uh, thing there. Uh, words. Words are dumb. I can't use <laughs> words. You'd think I'd be better at words if I were a podcaster, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah, words are hard. Words are hard. They go into, they go sometimes go in weird orders and they don't sound right. So they're, they're very difficult to That's right. make, make words out mouth sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Oops. That's the wrong button. Uh, that's it for this episode of Stadia cast. If you didn't know, Lloyd and I have another show called on deck. It's coming out tomorrow. Uh, make sure that you are here for that. If you haven't already clicked on all of the YouTube buttons down below, please do. Thank you guys for hanging out with us and spending time with us. You guys could have been anywhere. You decided to hang out with us and we really, really do appreciate that. Uh, you're awesome. Uh, Lloyd, why don't you tell everybody goodbye and I'll shut us down. All right, everybody, uh, take it easy. Have a great rest of your week. Uh, chin up. Let's let's look forward to some great news in the coming weeks. And we'll talk to you next time here on StadiCast.